Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. The NBC morning meteorologist for the D.C. area made an amazing tweet this morning. Chuck Bell, Chuck Bell 4, one of the atmospheric response to radical heat in the east is record snow in the west. It's all part of our changing climate. The tweet doesn't make sense grammatically, but I think it's obvious what he's trying to say. He's saying it's hot in the east and it's snowing in the west and it's due to climate change. So I did about 10 minutes research and found out that every single thing he said was wrong. Iowa State Register, Sunday, September 22nd, 1895. Snow in the west, hot in east. Snow in Dakota, Montana, and Colorado, different in east. New York, September 21st. According to the official record today, it was the hottest day of the year with a thermometer touching 97 degrees. Springfield, Massachusetts, September 21st, the thermometer registered 105 degrees here today. Brattleboro, Massachusetts, September 21st, this was the hottest day of the season. The thermometer reached 105 degrees. Rollins, Wyoming, September 21st, a heavy northeast snowstorm began early this morning. It's now 8 inches deep and still snowing. There are some fears for sheep still in the mountains. If it should turn cold, there will be heavy losses. So this week in 1895, it was 105 degrees in the northeast and heavy snow in the west. Well, that's a lot hotter than this here in the east. So it's pretty clear already that Chuck Bell has absolutely no clue what he's talking about. This was U.S. temperatures on September 21st, 1895. Pink means over 100 degrees. You can see it was over 100 degrees in the northeast and it was cold in the west. Now let's look at some other years, October 6th, 1951. Hot in east, snow in west. Snow fell in some western states today, but it was still summer-like weather in most of the eastern and southern states. So there was heavy snow in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where I'll be having dinner this weekend. It was 94 degrees in Washington, D.C., where Chuck Bell works. Here's another one from September 21st, 1983. Hot in east, cold in Midwest, snow in Montana. And here's one from July 1986. A hot weekend for the east, but snow in Montana Rockies. So if we go back and look at Chuck Bell's tweet again, we can see how ridiculous it is. The heat in the east is not at all radical, and there's nothing unusual about it being hot in the east and snowing in the west. Here's the weather map from this date in 1953. There were 100 degree temperatures from California up into Indiana. It was 103 degrees at Madison, Indiana on this date in 1953. Now let's compare that with this week's weather. The pattern is very similar, only this week is a lot cooler. It's only 91 degrees in Indiana instead of over 100 degrees. This graph shows the September 30th average maximum temperature at all southeastern U.S. United States Historical Climatology Network stations. You can see that end of September temperatures in the southeast peaked in 1904, and they've been declining ever since. And this graph shows the percent of stations in the southeastern U.S. which were over 90 degrees on September 30th. You can see that that's plummeted since the 19th century. Prior to 60 years ago, the southeastern U.S. was frequently very hot on September 30th. But recent years have been the coolest on record. People just aren't used to the normal weather anymore. Well, that's strike two for Chuck Bell. Now let's throw the third pitch. Chuck Bell is trying to blame heavy snow on global warming. But in the 2001 IPCC report, they said mild winter temperatures will decrease heavy snowstorms. And in the year 2000, David Viner of the Climatic Research Unit in England said, children just aren't going to know what snow is. Well, children in Montana are buried up to their waist in snow right now after last year being one of the coldest winters on record in Montana. At the end of February, the Washington Post reported that Montana just endured one of the nation's most exceptional cold spells on record. And on March 4th, Montana set their all-time record for March cold. So that's strike three for Chuck Bell. And I've sent all this information to him. What are the odds he'll make a correction? Well, if history is any guide, the odds are pretty close to zero. Climate alarmists never correct themselves because there's no benefit to them to tell the truth. But there are tremendous rewards for them for continuing to push the climate crisis scam. The only thing we can do is keep calling them out and letting more and more people know that they're being scammed.
Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pointing back to Kurt and I and junk science and propaganda for a long time.